Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks so much for joining me on this fleece to custom cardi series. Today is part two. In part one, we discussed creating the special fiber blend using cornmeal wool that I processed from a raw fleece, adding in locally sourced Angora, faux cashmere from SAF that I purchased at SAF, nylon and aloe fiber from Paradise Fibers, and silk brick from Kamaj Fiber Arts. And you can find links to all of that in the show notes down below. Today, we are taking our three times carded fibers where we started with 21 bats and ended with 18 because the final carding, I put more fibers in. And we are blending them together on the blending board and creating Rolex to spin. We're starting off with an explanation of how I came to the decision to make and spin from Rolex. And then uh, you'll get more details about that in the voiceover, so stay tuned for that. I'm so glad you've joined me and I hope you enjoy today's episode. Thanks guys, bye. All right, so this is after the second time through the carter and there's still little clumps of add-ins. Um, of course, this is just one little piece of a bat. I did split up all of the bats um, after their second time through the carter and mixed them all up. So this is just one little small piece. It's much more blended than it was, but this is what it looks like after three times. So you can see, uh, hopefully you can see quite a big difference. It's starting to get more neppy, so I really don't want to do any more carding than I absolutely have to. So twice through the carter and then I put some on the blending board thinking I would give that a try. Thought I would do the entire blending board and then change my mind so I had to pull it off and put it back on the blending board. So this has been through the blending board twice. The second time I pulled off Rolex. Then I have the third time through the carter just a strip of a small bat left. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin these. See how they draft and spin, then spin the third time through the drum carter, see how that drafts and spins. This is this fiber put on the blending board once and then removed, so this is three times through the drum carter, once on the blending board. And then I thought I would try a fourth time through the drum carter and again Rolex, um, oops, and just see the difference. Um, so I'm going to sample spin these and then I will be back with more information for this project. So my spinning choices were twice through the drum carter strip, uh, bat that stripped, um, blending board after being carded twice, blending board after being carded three times, and carding a fourth time and turning it into real legs on the drum carter. Out of all of those, I found that the Rolags themselves were the easiest to spin, regardless of how many times they were carded. And since I had most of the bats already carded three times, I went ahead and finished the third pass. I did end up with 18 bats instead of the 21 that I had originally because I, as I carded the third time, I filled up the drum carter just as full as I could for each bat. Um, and then I just stripped them down and fed them into the blending board, drafting as I went, trying to, well, I wasn't trying to do anything but load the blending board fairly evenly, and that caused further blending of the fibers. I did learn a few things through this. One is, if you overload your blending board, it is really hard to form Rolex to draft them off the board and then those Rolex have so much fiber in them that it is really hard to draft them for spinning. So um, something I struggled with through the entirety of this uh, blending board portion of the project was 
um, not loading the board quite as much as I wanted to. Um, I wanted to pack as much fiber in there as the board would allow, and that's just not the best for spinning. So um, backing off and doing less, in this case, less is indeed better. So just a little tip to keep in mind. You don't need to fill the teeth up as full as you can get them um, unless you're trying to make mini bats, and then I guess it doesn't really matter. But Rolex require less fiber. So, and that's true with a blending board. It's true with a drum carter as well. So I think that's about everything to say about this project. It took me about a week to get all the bats turned into Rolex, and then before spinning, I weighed them out, and I have enough to make 16 bobbins of singles. So I think that's a pretty good bid. I have over two pounds of Rolex ready to spin. And, uh, but I have to say, using this blending board was so much fun. I did have a little trouble when um, the whole fabric was staple to the board. And the staples that were used were really, really short. So I had to put a few screws in the top of the board where I was putting the most pressure on the carding cloth. The staples were starting to come out. So um, yeah, a few screws just fixed that little problem and I haven't had an issue since. So that's an idea for you if your carding cloth starts pulling off the board. However, if you don't fill up your board too much, it won't do that. So, tip from a pro, <clears throat> not pro. Anywho, I'm still very much a beginner, but I did learn tons and I got better and better at making the roll eggs and I feel much more confident about it. So, let me know what you think about this and how full you fill up your blending board if you have one, what tells you to stop all those things would be appreciated if you could give me a few tips and if you have any questions or comments leave them down in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more of the shenanigans and fun that we have over here at fairly fiber fun until next time have a great day